To read it and weave the podcast where we talk about books we read in high school. Were they good? Were they as bad as everyone made them seem? <laughs> um, do you want to introduce yourself first? I mean, if you don't know me, that's your loss. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, my name is Carrie. I don't want to give my last name. <laughs> um, we are rising juniors at different schools now. Mm-hmm. I'm early childhood and. I don't know what else is interesting about me. You go to Favorite it. classic novel. Oh, yeah. Um, probably Little Women. Little Women. Louisa May Alcott. All right. Well, I'm Elizabeth Hanan, if you want to go full name. Um, and I am nursing major turned early childhood education major. Um, and right now it looks like speech language pathology is in the future but we don't know yet <laughs> um and uh favorite classic novel jane eyre charlotte bronte red yeah. room, red room. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so let's start with first i'm gonna like watch the time because i don't want to talk for forever oh, it will say it's too hard so Today we're going to talk about The Yellow Wallpaper, which I must confess is not a book or a short story that I read in high school. It was optional, but I didn't read it in high school, but I read it in college. (laughs) I read it two days ago, so this whole thing's based on a lie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, So yeah, it's Charlotte Perkins Gilman, and it's The Yellow Wallpaper, And I think it's a doozy. I think it's a fun one to read. (laughs) If I were an English professor, I think I would definitely keep it in my curriculum. Um, Do you want to start with the synopsis? Do you want to try to tackle what happened? Okay. It's a really weird concept to uh, summarize. (laughs) Oh, look at the clock. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, um, this woman has some form of depression after giving birth to her child. And... Her husband, back in the, what was it, 1700s this was based? Mm -hmm. 1700s or 1800s? 1800s. Um, He was a physician, and he believed that the best cure for mental problems was rest and isolation, which... Fresh air out in the countryside. Yeah. So he takes her, and they move to this house that's creepy, and then he takes her and makes her bedroom this old nursery on the top floor that's got this disgusting, ripped-up yellow wallpaper. Right, so not, like, your happy yellow. No, like... that's the interesting thing about yellow, is, like, yellow can be, like, happy sunshine color. Or, like, pee. Sick. (laughs) Sick color. There's literally a part in the short story (laughs) where she goes... I think of all the things that are yellow, but not good things. <laughs> Foul things. <Yeah. laughs> you automatically know what she's talking about. Um, yeah. So she's, she lo- she's locked in this room, and it's like the story of her like progression into madness. Yeah. Because she's like isolated and trapped. She begins to imagine that there is a woman trapped behind the wallpaper, mm-hmm. and that the wallpaper is like bars of a prison that every night she shakes to get out. And so, the further into madness she goes, the further she's convinced there's this woman that she has to free. Right. And, do we, like, I guess... Which we can talk about the symbolism about that later. Yeah. But, like, well, first and foremost, we were reading this. I was like, can you think of a time when you were trapped? And we could not <laughs> think of a story about when we were trapped. But I was thinking about, like, stories about, like, walls and stuff. And so, I guess a funny thing that happened with walls with Carrie is our other roommate Mackenzie which we all roomed together our freshman year and we lived in a dorm that was apartment style right so we each had our own rooms they mm-hmm. were like closets <laughs> God, that's the tra- I'm talking about closet. trapped <laughs> um, and uh, we like lived in these little rooms and the walls were like paper thin we had neighbors that lived above us that were chaotic wild yeah Gotten into the hanky-panky. Yeah, (laughs) doing some funny things upstairs, having some fun. Um, And it was, we could always hear it. It was, like, you could always hear it. But I remember, (laughs) I would, like, always, because I was a nursing major back then, so I was with Kinsey, who's a nursing major, who we would, like, sit in her room and study. And I remember you went to Zumba one night, and you came back and got in your bed. Kinsey has, like, these stress balls that, like, she would bounce up against the wall. Just awful habit of throwing things against <laughs> the, the wall. wall. To catch it. Like, kind of like when you play, like, tennis with a wall or whatever. Um, and I remember she, like, started banging it, and Carrie was like, 
what are these people doing? <laughs> like they're they're doing it again. I thought and, we, I thought people were having sex. Nowadays. <laughs> so we were like laughing, and Kinsey was like, "Oh no! Like we should pretend that like <laughs> this is like actually happening." So we like it was a joke. Like we kept banging the ball on the wall. For many <laughs> nights. For many nights. And I just thought the people above me yeah. were really active. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I thought about that immediately when I was reading this. And I was, like, thinking about, like, you know, if there's, like, an actual person in the walls. But, like, there was nothing there. Oh but we gosh. had you convinced the whole semester. That, I was like, so mad when they told me that it was, was not real. There. Um, I felt so traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> so, naturally, when I read it, I thought about... Because there's, like, she thinks about this woman in the walls, right? And, like, I think that the woman is symbolic of, like, her true self, right? Because mm-hmm. she doesn't fit the mold of what Victorian society would think a woman is. Because no. she, like, has issues with, like, her, she's not, like, naturally she's, inclined to take care of her baby. No, she's not maternal at all. No. She likes to write, mm-hmm. and that's not something that women did back then. Right. She liked to be active and work and stuff, mm-hmm. and her husband... I mean, back in the time, obviously, he looked down on it anyway, but then with her being mentally ill, really looked down on it. Mm-hmm. And so he just kept her in that room or taking a walk outside, and, like, that was it. Right. And I, I think we can talk about the husband next. So the husband's name is John. John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's interesting that... So the, the protagonist, does, we, we never get a name for her. No. Because I think she's supposed to be symbolically Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Because she wrote the short story I was trying to tell you about, like, she had her own, like, bout of depression. And I think that's another reason why this story is, like, kind of relatable. But um, she wrote it after one of her therapists told her, like, oh, no, you can't write. That's not good for you because you're a woman. And yeah, so she wrote, right, kids. so she wrote this short story afterwards. Um but I think it's, it's really ironic that the protagonist is, like, more masculine than John. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and the end of the thing, John faints like yeah, a wussy. Yeah, so, so, like, John is not, he's not masculine. But, yeah. like, he, and progressively throughout the story, he, like, goes out, and he's a doctor, right? He's a physician. Mm-hmm. And he, like, goes out to the town. So, he, like, he leaves her in the house by herself. And I guess Jenny, the maid, takes care of the baby. Even the maid gets a name. Yeah, <laughs> even the maid gets a name, but the protagonist doesn't have a name. Nah. I guess to make this more re- relatable. And I also guess. just, I think, because, like, she viewed herself as unimportant in the household, right. kind of fading into the background, right. a burden on everyone. So it was symbolic she didn't get a name because she didn't think she mattered. Right. And, like, I think that progressively, like, John starts to spend more time away from the house. Yeah. And like, she got crazier. Right. Like, and that, that, like, kind of hurt because it was like, oh, man, like, she's getting worse and worse. And John is, like, finding more excuses to stay in town and not be with his wife. Um, but I, did, I haven't talked to you about this yet. But I remember in class distinctly, we were talking about the room, right? Um, and she describes it, not, there's the, the, the lurid, sickly yellow wallpaper. <laughs> so, like, it's torn in places, right? So she, yeah. thinks, she thinks the room's a nursery. Mm-hmm. Because she's like, these kids have come up and they've, like, torn this wallpaper off the walls. It's, like, chaotic in here and gross. Um, and then she talks about, like, the bedpost is, like, gnawed. And so, like, I'm thinking about, like, <laughs> like... Do you know, like, the human jaw is pretty strong, but, like, do you, can you imagine, like, someone gnawing wood? Well, yeah. And so you, you, you're uh, left to only think, like, is she gnawing on the wood? Are the children gnawing on the wood? I think is she, a dog gnawing on the wood? I don't know. I know at one point in the story, she did, when, at the very end, when she got real desperate to move that bed to get to the wallpaper, mm-hmm. um, she did bite it. Right. And it, she said it hurt her tooth. But I remember noticing, like, the bed was nailed to the ground. Nailed to the ground. And there were, like, rings attached to the wall. Yeah, there's rings on the wall. And I'm thinking, what is that for? Did you notice the window? It had bars on it. Yes. And this is the, this was what got me in class when he was explaining this to us. It's like, the window, like, you, I I imagine, like, the houses, like, in Charleston, where you see them on the outside. And, like, they have, like, the, like, the trellis. And, like, if this were a nursery, obviously you'd want bars, yeah. like, on the outside patios so that the kids wouldn't fall off. But she, like, distinctly notes, like, waking up in the middle of the night and, like, she can see, like, the bars, the shadows. And, like, the bars have to be all the way up for you to see shadows at nighttime. So, like, 
that like sort of hinted the fact that this this is not necessarily a nursery. nursery. <laughs> like I think that it was. I think that, and that's why I think a lot of people demonize John is because like when you read that about the room, like you start to think like he knew that his wife was going crazy, and he he decided to buy. Mm. or whatever that was whatever this room was i don't think that's the first crazy person that we saw yeah so and then also with john like another reason they demonized him he never did he never did anything she wanted she wanted that wallpaper gone Mm -hmm. she wanted a room on the first floor of the house and he was like no i can't give in to your fancies because then you're gonna get crazier little did he know right so i think a lot of like and that's why it's interesting to like have a discussion with like a class would be um, a lot of people demonize John. Now, I, like I said, I do think that, that he he fits the mold of, like, what a man was supposed to be during the time. And so, like, you can't, like, completely demonize him. But, like, I think there's certainly some He's still fault. kind of suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's some fault there. <laughs> um, let's think. What else is there? Um, I'm pulling out my paper that I wrote on this a long time ago. Well, then... <laughs> Because I did, um, because we talked about the yellow wallpaper, and, and, and I guess we can talk next about the, the woman in the wallpaper. Yeah, the symbolism of that. So, like, I think, like, she's, right, she's her true self that's stuck in the wallpaper. Mm-hmm. Where she's, like, even symbolic of, like, all the women of the society that are yeah. trapped behind. The, a man. Yeah. Or and role of women the role in society. Of women in society. So about the shadow woman she saw on the wallpaper was really like the ideal free woman, mm-hmm. like free from the restraints of the ideals that men would put on them. Mm-hmm. Well, and I wanted to talk about. So we went. Was it last year? Was the anniversary for Little Women? Yeah. Yeah. So we went to that little talk they did. The tea party. The tea party. The and they talked about the yellow wallpaper. And I thought it was interesting, which you've read Little Women all the way through. I do I love not think Little I've women. read Little Women all the way through. <laughs> women, women. Little, little <laughs> Women, women. <laughs> women, women. Um, I don't think I've read Little Women all the way through. So you'll be the one to answer this. Like how it compares. Because a professor compared Little Women to the yellow little wallpaper. Paper. And like... I guess Joe kind of embodies. Definitely with Joe, yeah. I would say because she was a very masculine girl, mm-hmm. not even necessarily in the way she looked, because obviously she was pretty enough where like men desired her, but just in like she loved to write, she mm-hmm. cut all her hair off, um, she did all these things, and she went to school and she tried to submit things for a newspaper. She did all of these things that like women weren't expected to do, and like that women were kind of looked down on for doing or viewed as, like, strange. Um, But she didn't care. And she, I think, is kind of the ideal of what our woman in, like, our woman in this story, like, wants to be. Battery. So we were talking about little women. (laughs) Um, I don't know where to go from there. Um, Okay, well, we can transfer from that into the ending when she releases the woman that she wants to be and the woman in the wallpaper kind of merges into right. the physical manifestation mm-hmm. the lady whatever her name is i'm gonna call her sue 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 we're gonna name her sue, <laughs> sue, 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 sue. <laughs> <laughs> you you were singing jim chimney <laughs> from little i was, I was gonna go sim simony sim simony sim sim <laughs> sue, sue, sue. i don't know what i was doing with that oh my gosh um okay so yeah, she does. She releases that, and I think that's the progression from like the beginning. She seems perfectly normal and sane. She's like, "Oh, I'm writing this. Um, I hope I hope John doesn't catch me writing. <laughs> I love John. Um, he does so much for me. <laughs> he, does, he cares so oh. much for me. Oh, John. Um, and then to progressively like, like it starts with the, she's talking about the wallpaper. Yeah, let me see if I can find my quote. Where she's just talking, like, from, like, an artistic point of view. So I was, like, like, we went to the Met together. So, like, when we went and we, you just admire artwork yeah. in that way. It changes from her, like, talking about it from, like, an artistic point of view to, like, dude, like, look at, the, look at all, like, the curves in the wallpaper. My favorite line. They, like, 
commit suicide. Like, they run off and commit suicide. I, was I like, liked uh. the part where she um, <laughs> talked about the coils in the pattern of the wallpaper looked like heads that had yeah. been cut off and yeah. then, like, like, turned upside um, down when the eyes were white. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh. 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 So then she starts, she it graduates to her seeing this woman in the wallpaper. And, like, I can imagine her, like, telling John about this and John's like, okay. <laughs> I, I gotta go back to town. Um, <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so it, it does, it graduates that, and you're right that, like, the symbolism lies in the fact that it it's her true self hidden behind the wallpaper, and so she tries to get it out, and, like, it, I think you can read that last part d- different ways. So, like, you can read that, like, she wants to get the woman out, and she has the rope, right? So she, like, low-key wants to kill the woman because the woman's causing her all this trouble, mm-hmm. but, like... Could that have been, like, a representation of wanting to kill herself? hmm Yeah. And I, I, that was the hardest part about, like, reading it in class was, like, you want to believe that, like, she'll get free and then she'll leave the house and then maybe start her own life. That's but, like, not that's happening. not, that's, the rope tells you that's not No, if happening. she didn't die, John probably sent her butt straight to Bedlam. Right. <laughs> that's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess we can talk about theme. Um. And I, it's interesting we're talking about this this way because we are totally not wanting to be, like, AP Lit teachers. But no. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I would want to be any kind of, like, high school English teacher is because my favorite part of AP Lit was taking that red pen and and teacher would be like, all right, switch papers with somebody. And then the person getting my paper would be like, oh, I don't know what to mark. Know, oh, it's so mark. good. And I'm not even saying that because it was good. I'm just saying, like, they were scared to mark my paper. Right. Yeah. But yet when I hand theirs back, it's more red than black yeah. at this point. It's like got, like, red ink on my hands. It's like a murder scene with a I paper. I will find issues with your paper. <laughs> that was the best um, part. Oh, I had a special pin for that. Um, all right, let me think. But yeah, we, we did, I don't, did y'all always have to find themes in AP Lit? Themes were not my specialty. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so I took, I, I was an international baccalaureate student, and you were AP, so advanced placement. Yeah. Which, they're almost the same thing. Yeah, except um, for some reason mine counts for more. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different rant. Um, but, yeah, we always had a theme that we tied things back to, and I think themes are like, I don't know what that was. Um, oh. <laughs> um, I think, like, themes are, like, things that, the, like, universal takeaways that we get. And we get them from, like, I, like even watching movies. Like, you yeah. can get them. Um, so I think that's the what we're trying to get at with this podcast thingy is talking about stuff like that. Because mm. I think you pick it up wherever. But I, th- what do you think the yellow wallpaper tries to tell us? I think probably a good theme of the yellow wallpaper is, like, feminism. Because, mm-hmm. like, obviously this woman was different from the regular woman in society in that time. And the woman in the wallpaper that she saw, she took such efforts to, in the end, to break free. Right. And it was like, no matter what happened after that, I remember she said, she said, oh, I've got, what did she say? Either She either said, I've gotten her out, you can't put her back, or you mm-hmm. said, you can't put me back. Right. So, regardless of the out. circumstances, she finally managed, in a crazy way to have be free right. at least in her whims and her wants and her and thoughts and thoughts and I, I think that feminism is definitely a motif certainly and i think that's a good theme i the one that i picked was the theme of fighting for individuality when faced with conformity by society that's so much smarter than my word i just said feminism well because it's it's written in a paper oh okay so that that's the only reason why it's like i spent time Themes were so hard. I would just sit there and, like, stare at my paper. Honestly, like, half the time when I wrote a paper, I'd say, oh, this is the theme. Yeah. And then I'd get the paper back, and my teacher would go, this is not, not a, a theme. theme. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make sense. I used to get that on my papers all the time. I oh, my gosh. My math paint. teacher uh, in college. <laughs> this doesn't make, make sense. sense. <laughs> Question mark? Question <laughs> mark? Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> I think bringing it, like, big full circle, uh, if you want to, I think the, the story... Gilman meant for it to be read in a feminist lens but if you want to read it for like any point of view for anybody I think it's like if you're trapped by ideals or trapped by something Mm -hmm. then you know society keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and I think that her story tells us that like either you're gonna have to at some point break away from that or totally embrace your bounds I guess yeah 
Um, Either way, you're probably gonna go crazy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's re- it's a sad story, but yeah. it gave me the willies. <laughs> It reminded me of claustrophobia, and I hate (laughs) being in small spaces. Yeah. Um, But I I, I do, I think it's an interesting piece. Now, would you, so we we liked it. Um, Yeah. Obviously, we didn't read it in high school. No. Do you think you would have read it any differently? I would have enjoyed reading that in high school. I agree. There were things that I read in high school, like short stories, that were so stupid. Yeah. There was this one about this man who made a deal with the devil, and then like, (laughs) I don't even remember it. It was so dumb. But I would read that, and I think I'd probably feel the exact same way that I feel now about it, which is, you know, approving it and getting mm-hmm. things from it. Obviously, I'm getting more now because I'm a little older. Right. Not that much older, but... <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Like, mentally, yeah. you know, we've grown, and so reading this now versus mm-hmm. if we had read it in high school probably be a little different, but I think this is something that um, teachers should definitely include in their curriculum. Instead right. of other dumb things. Well, and that being said, we're both avid readers, so we read a lot. Um, yeah. But it's not that hard. It's only no. ten pages. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good short one. I'd definitely, like, if you were teaching someone how to, like, analyze literature or something. Because mm-hmm. um, the symbolism is pretty... <laughs> um, but, yeah, I agree. I think that I would have liked it no matter what. Um, I'm interested with this podcast endeavor if we're going to get to a book in which we either disagree or... Probably. We probably will at some point. Because um, our tastes are kind of different. Different, yeah. Um, but, yeah. That's... I'm interested to see that. Because, obviously, like, I think with high school reading, like, a lot of people... Like, we were talking about The Scarlet Letter. Yeah. Um, and how, like, <laughs> That'll everybody... be a different one, but yeah. Right. Um... Which is why I hope with this we'll get people on here to talk as well with us. Because I think that, um, you know, we have... The, the tendency in high school was to say that you didn't like it. Even if you did. Even if you like, did. you were looked down on yeah. if you liked it. Yeah. Like, I was one of those kids who liked the Scarlet Letter. Yeah. But everyone else was like, Eh, what is the Scarlet why? Letter? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> it's interesting to read things with, an, like, a, an adult eye adult in air quotes because we ain't adults adults. but um (laughs) just to read it with an adult eye I guess and and like actually appreciate it for what it is instead of like feeling constricted by your society (laughs) it comes full circle (laughs) um but I think we're good for today um and I guess we need like a jingle (laughs) (laughs) we do we need a jingle I don't know why, like, the <laughs> Phineas and Ferb thing keeps coming in my head. Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. <laughs> we can't use that. That's we'll copyright. Work, yeah, we'll work on a jingle. Um, but people who get this sent this link, which are likely our friends and family, <laughs> suggest one down below. What was your favorite thing you read in high school? Um, or something that you've liked to read recently? Yeah. Not even in high school. Because eventually we're going to get into, we'll like, high school books. we'll get into new adult yeah. Young adult for Young those adult. people that like that. <laughs> <laughs> or if you hate it, watch anyway because we're fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it for today. So okay. we'll, we'll close <laughs> off for today. Um, How do you want to close? Two, three. Thanks for listening. Now we're going to read an Adelie. I don't know. You know we need like a, either like, we either need like a jingle or like a catchphrase. Like, I don't know. Lord. Oh my gosh, here. we gotta think of something. Read it and weep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to get a glass of water, like we said. And you say, read it and weep, and then I throw a glass of water on no! your face. Like, ah! <laughs> yeah, okay. At that, we're gonna conclude this because I don't wanna get wet right now. <laughs> Due time. <laughs>